In October in 1216, King John of England lost the crown jewels while leading a campaign against rebellious leaders of the English districts. Against all advice, John, who is chiefly remembered for being forced to sign the Magna Carta, one of the cornerstones of civil liberty, and he took a shortcut via the Wash, which is a tidal estuary on England's east coast. And the king amazingly died a week later from dysentery before any explanations could be recorded. But how suspicious do you need it? When the crown jewels get lost the week before the king dies, and many historians do believe that the king was poisoned with ale, but for what reasons? His son took the throne and conquered the stubborn lands in his name. Is it really a case of simply losing such valuable artifacts? But what if we were to tell you that they have just been found 800 years later? Wait till you hear this. In September in 1216, John began a fresh vigorous attack. He marched from the Cotswolds, feigned an offensive to relieve the besieged Windsor Castle, and attacked eastwards around London to Cambridge to separate the rebel-held areas of Lincolnshire and East Anglia. From there, he travelled north to relieve the rebel siege at Lincoln and back east to Lynn, probably to order further supplies from the continent. And it was in Lynn that John contracted dysentery, and this would ultimately prove fatal. Meanwhile, Alexander II invaded Northern England again, taking Carlisle in August and then marching south to give homage to Prince Louis for his English possessions. And King John narrowly missed intercepting Alexander along the way. Tensions between Louis and the English barons began to increase, promoting a wave of desertions, including William Marshall's son William and William Longsby, who both returned to John's faction. King John returned west, but it is said that he lost a significant part of his baggage train along the way. And it was Roger of Wendover who provided the most graphic account of this, suggesting that the king's belongings, including the English crown jewels, were lost as he crossed the tidal estuaries, which empties into the wash, being sucked in by quicksand and whirlpools. Accounts of the incident vary considerably between the various chroniclers and the exact location of the incident has never been confirmed. Modern historians assert that by October 1216, John faced a stalemate, a military situation uncompromised by defeat. John's illness grew worse and by the time he reached Newark Castle in Nottinghamshire, he was unable to travel any further and he died on the night of October the 18th and numerous accounts circulated soon after his death that he'd actually been killed by poisoned ale. His body was escorted south by a company of mercenaries and he was buried in Worcester Cathedral in front of the altar of St. Wolfston. A new sarcophagus with an effigy was made for him in 1232 in which he now remains at rest. In his will, John ordered that his niece Eleanor, who might have had a claim to the English throne of his successor Henry III, and she was never to be released from prison. And remarkably, 800 years later, the crown jewels may have been rediscovered by a metal detectorist, Raymond Koschuk, a mechanical engineer who says, I am 100% certain that this is it, that this is the real thing. When I gained access this September, I isolated an area of high valuable targets and it tested positive for elements of gold, silver, emeralds, sapphires, and even rubies. Using equipment he has designed himself to pick up anomalies in the readings of magnetic fields, he has received strong signals for high value items. Koschuk hopes to start digging up his finds in the coming weeks before submitting them to the archaeologist and Lincolnshire's finds officer for verification and he says that The biggest attraction of this area I detected is an accumulation of silver. This tells me there is between 60 and 100 pound of silver but it could be more, and I believe that this was the cash box that the king was carrying. Koschuk has also had positive tests for gold, and he hopes to have found the royal regalia from the 13th century which was lost when the treasure disappeared. He has already spent 12 months conducting tests at Sutton Bridge, and he has already recovered a wealth of artefacts during a quick sweep with a metal detector, including hammer bolts, nails, an eyelet, and even a belt buckle. And he told the Spalding Today newspaper, I have never seen anything 
like the field itself. It is absolutely phenomenal, the number of readings that it is giving off. I expect to find King John's treasure anywhere between 2 feet down and 11 feet down. Comments below, and as always guys, thank you for watching.